Thank you, Apka. I'm excited to be a part of this spring virtual national conference. I've been a professional speaker now for over 16 years, been to more than 500 campuses. Since last August, I've done more than 120 virtual programs. And I can remember the very first virtual program that I did last August for a school in California, the advisor told all of the representatives of clubs and organizations that we're still in business, we're just doing business differently. And I think that's true. Whether going forward, we're gonna do virtual, hybrid, or in person, we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. And I'm ready to adapt, I'm ready to go, and I look forward to this opportunity to work with you. Uh, I feel like I'm a very confident person, a very confident speaker, but I didn't always have the same level of confidence that I have now. When I first started out, I can remember being at a school and I was waiting to go in and there was a window in the door and I could see the students. And as I was looking in, I could see them and they were sort of just sitting there. Some of them were talking, a few of them were poking each other. And I was thinking, oh, are they gonna like me? Are they gonna like my stories? How is this going to go? And then from inside the room, I heard, and now boys and girls, welcome Mr. Kelly. And I went in to face the most hostile and volatile of audiences possible, five-year-olds. I was actually at an at-risk elementary school in Atlanta to read to kids as part of my Kiwanis Club's program. And these were kindergartners. And so I strode into the room and all of the little people were sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor. Do you remember doing that? Are some of you doing it now? And I went to the reader's chair, which was designed for a five-year-old. And I sat down and I looked at everyone and I said, hi, boys and girls, I'm Mr. Kelly and I'm from the Kiwanis Club. And I'm here to read to you today. And I brought three books. Does everybody like guest readers? And some of the hands went up and then they looked around they went back down again and they went up slowly and it seemed like this was going to be a good bet. One little girl off to the side still had her hand up and I said, yes, sweetie, do you have a question? And she said, I like Cat in the Hat. I hadn't brought Cat in the Hat that day, so I thought I might be in trouble. And then there was a little boy off to the side who still had his hand up and I said, yes, do you have a question? And he said, we have three cats. And I looked over at the teacher for help, but she had her face buried in her hands and some sort of self-induced coma, so I knew I was on my own. So I figured I better go with the book that I knew the best, the one that I always read to my daughters, Green Eggs and Ham. So I started reading, I am Sam. I am Sam. Sam I am. That Sam I am, that Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. And all of the kids were at rapt attention, just like all of you are, waiting for more pictures from the book, right? I'm sorry, I don't have any today, but I'm reading along and I'm reading about this guy who he doesn't like the green eggs and ham and he won't eat them in a house and he won't eat them with a mouse. He won't eat them here or there. He won't eat them. And then the kids shouted out anywhere. And I'm like, awesome. They've read the book. And then he says, I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. And the kids shouted out, Sam, I am. And I'm thinking, Audience participation, this is amazing. And so now I'm really getting excited and I'm reading about the boat and the goat and the train and the rain and all the places that this guy whose name we never learn will not eat the green eggs and ham. And the kids are shouting anywhere and Sam I am and they're getting louder and louder. So loud in fact, that the first grade teacher from across the hallway came over and asked me if I could quiet the children down. And I looked at her and I said, are you kidding me? I'm on a roll here. And I got to that one page where this guy decides he'll try it, if Sam will leave him alone. And there's no words on that page, just him holding a fork with the egg dangling off of it. But if there were any words, I think the word would be, yeah. And then he eats the egg and he loves it. And, and he tells Sam he will eat the green eggs and ham in all those places that he said he wouldn't. And he gets to the very end and he says, I do so love green eggs and ham. Thank you, thank you. And the kids shouted out, Sam, I am. And I was hooked. And I've been reading to those kids now for more than 20 years. Not the same kids. They've hopefully grown up a little bit since then. Here's a picture of my kids from a few years ago. Uh, I, I love this picture because I get paid in hugs and you can just see how happy everyone is. Well, except for Danelle there in the yellow shirt. I'm not sure why he's screaming because poor little Amanda, that blonde haired girl, she's just getting crushed. And then you see that, that young man there in the red shirt with the big smile on his face? His name was, is Lenward, and he was in that class, his kindergarten class. And this is me with his teacher, uh, Miss G. 
And I read to Miss G's classes for over 15 of those years. And she was a great educator and a true serving leader. In fact, I found out uh, just this last year that Miss G had become an adopted uh, godmother to Lenward's family. She found out when he was in her class that the family was homeless. It was him, his mom, and two sisters. And so she helped them get an apartment, helped mom get a job, and she continued to support the family all the way through school. And she actually drove him to his first day of classes. That is a real serving leader. And that is a big part of what I talk about in my program, building leaders through service and how we can all be serving leaders. Uh, there have been a lot of great serving leaders through time, and they have had some amazing things to tell us. And I think what Dr. King is telling us here is that our service will determine our greatness. And Mother Teresa, now known as St. Teresa of Calcutta, she's telling us little things mean a lot. If you've ever seen us do APCA serves, you know we do a lot of little projects, but they have a huge impact. And then uh, these are not new ideas. They go back thousands of years. The idea that we're not here to be served, but to serve others. Certainly not to our detriment, but by putting others first, we elevate them. And we don't know if we're ever going to come this way again. And so we have opportunities to serve right in front of us daily. We need to take those opportunities. And that's what being a serving leader is. And when I do this program, I have 15 qualities that I talk about, and they're divided into four areas. Dignity of the individual, how we treat one another, sacrifice and integrity. What are we willing to do even when no one's looking? Recognition, knowing who we are and where we're going. And lastly, responsible stewardship. What do we do with what's been given to us? You see, for me, leadership is all about service. And to me, there's a distinction between service and serving us. If you're asking what's in it for me, you're asking the wrong question. That's leadership. So what problems does this program solve? Engagement on campus, getting students involved and engaged, getting them to think about being a serving leader and also engaging them in community service, retaining members in clubs and organizations, as well as retaining students on your campus, increasing involvement in those clubs and organizations, helping students to develop their leadership qualities and abilities, not only for their academic career, but beyond. Uh, getting them to focus on other people and helping them to be happier with the course of their academic uh, career and the time that they spend on your campus. Where would you use this? Everywhere. New student orientation, welcome back week, family weekends, uh, make a difference week in October, Dr. King uh, holiday in January, great opportunities to use this either virtually, hybrid or in person with a service fair on your campus, any sort of a training that you do. I do this both as a keynote and as a workshop. So this is a great program for you. And I know you might be thinking, well, gee, Dave, is, is that all you do? No, I do all kinds of other stuff too. I do training for student governments. I talk about parliamentary procedure. Now, I don't teach this whole big book during my session, but enough that your clubs, organizations, student government, fraternities, sororities, programming board, anybody will know how to run a meeting, how to get motions uh, made, how to call a meeting to order. You can hit a gavel. You can ring a bell. You can even shake a clapper or you can smack a freshman, whatever it takes to get your meeting underway. All right, full disclaimer, don't smack a freshman. I also talk about membership recruitment and retention. Membership recruitment is going to be huge when we get back on campuses to get students re-engaged in clubs and organizations, and then keeping them engaged. And that has been a real challenge during this past year. Secrets of motivation and delegating authority, getting students to do things and to be a part of that organization and helping your student leaders to be able to delegate in an effective way. Playing well with others, dealing with conflict, civil discourse, examining our values and how they impact on the way that we serve as a leader, being a positive force for change as a visionary leader, making changes in the world, advocating for things, being active if we need to on campus, in the community, in the world. These are some of my most popular programs. Is that all I do? No, I got about 10 more that you can find on my website. So lots of things for you to choose from. What problems do they solve? Similar to before, but student engagement, retention in clubs and organization and of the students on your campus. Involvement in clubs and organizations, showing each member that they are important and that they have a role to play. Having students be focused outwardly on other people. That's true leadership. These are the types of things that I can bring to your campus literally through any of these platforms 
and in person. I bring energy and excitement. They have a lot of fun. How do you use these types of topics? Student government training and retreats, leadership conferences, uh, board uh, training events, a student leadership workshop series that I have done for more than two dozen schools in the virtual environment with activities fairs, emerging leaders programs. These are great. I have a program on self-esteem that fits in very well for emerging leaders. Now, I mentioned the virtual leadership workshop series. That is still going to be available even if we're all in, in person in the fall. This is something that I think you can take advantage of. And what it allows you to do, to do is to spread four topics out over the semester. Very hard to do in person unless I can drive to you and or even through the school year. I've had some schools do a couple last fall and they've done some this spring. I've got some that are doing them this spring and they've already scheduled some for the fall. A few schools had me four straight Fridays or four straight Tuesdays, however you want to work it. And plus, if you want more, I, I got rates up to eight and I can even go beyond that. One school got 10. Uh, you're like, oh, I only need one or two. Great. I can do that for you as well. Four is kind of the, the place where most people land. That is $2,000. You can do that. And anything that you book with me, whether it's in-person, virtual, or hybrid, you get 25 copies of my book. Since last August, I've sent out nearly 2,000 copies of my book to the schools that have booked me to work with their students. And so I want to put those in your students' hands too. And it's based on the program that is the title of Building Leaders Through Service. So it's an expansive uh, attempt to give more information about that topic, uh, even more so than the workshop. I've actually done it for a couple of classes virtually during this last year, first year experience. Now I've got a special event coming up on Tuesday, June 15th. It's a collaborative student government retreat, virtual, and only 10 schools can participate. So the cost for you is $900. It's going to be a thousand for everybody else. Even APCA schools that were not at this conference, it's going to cost a thousand dollars. I'm not releasing it to the whole world until Wednesday, the 23rd at midnight. So you've got time, I'm sorry, Wednesday the 21st at midnight. You've got time to get in on this. And so I'd love to have you be a part of this. I'm going to be doing three topics myself. And we're going to have a session where we're going to break the students out by position so that you can interact with other student government leaders who are in a similar position or same position as you are and get a chance to talk and interact with them, make connections, get ideas. This is going to be a great opportunity for you to get some really good training, work with other schools, and fit this into your budget. So please sign up. You can actually register by using this QR code or the bit.ly link that's there. You can uh, use this on a camera, using a camera on your phone or tablet or any device that has a camera. If you need me to send you an invoice or something along those lines in order to process it through your school, that's fine. You can contact me through Workplace by chatting with me or you can email me and I'll be happy to send that to you so that you can get in on this great program. Uh, any questions, I'm willing uh, to take those and answer those. You can also put questions in the comments afterwards if you're watching this recording or you think about something later on and Workplace will notify me that somebody commented on this video. See, for me, when I think about leadership and my role as a speaker, as an author, as a trainer, for me, I want to get students engaged and involved. And I have an ed session coming up on Wednesday the 15th. Uh, here's all the different times. You can see those on the screen. So I've figured out an accommodate the time for our friends out in Hawaii. Of course, it'll be recorded. So if you're not able to watch it live, you can participate with that on a recording as well. See, for me, the distinction and, and what we're doing here is we can change the world by serving one life at a time. And I look forward to having the opportunity to come to your campus, whether it's virtual, hybrid, or in-person, or any other way that we can figure out and serving your students. Thank you so much, APCA, and have a great virtual conference.